Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Legends of Space History of American Spaceflight uh, Evolutionist Spaceflight set. Uh, so as you guys can see, pretty neat little set here. We have some uh, scale figures of different influential um, spacecraft and aircraft in, uh, I guess, the space history. So we'll go from left to right. Uh, we have some different X planes. We'll look at these on the back here in a second. We have our Mercury Atlas. We have our Saturn V, our STS, Space Transportation System. Not as it inaccurately says on the back of the package. We'll see that in a second. Gemini, uh, the uh, Atlas II, which has the Gemini capsule on top. We have Mercury Redstone, uh, and a different X plane. I wish I knew the specific one. I can't think of it off the top of my head. And then Orbiter Enterprise. So didn't actually go to space, but they decided to include it because they have the mold. Why not throw it in? At least that's my guess. So as you guys can see from the front, it's made by Echo Toys. Uh, they're based down in Florida, so it kind of makes sense for them to do this because, you know, they would benefit the most from selling these, probably at a place like Kennedy Space Center and uh, elsewhere. You can pick these up online, but also at different um, space visitor centers. A lot of the NASA official visitor centers, you'll find these same sets. Flip to the bottom, you can see there are different Legends of Space sets. They have the Launch Complex 39, uh, a collective, Collectible Orbiter, which is just the orbiter they have in here, uh, Apollo Orbiter, uh, and just different things of that nature. There we go. There's the actual uh, price over here that would have sold for. It uh, retailed for a decent uh, price, in my opinion, because I love having uh, models, no matter how much they lack detail, because these are a good size to fit on the shelf display them together it's really neat there we go have another um, set of logos 10 piece set check the bottom same thing let's over to the back mercury redstone has a uh, flight facts on the back mercury atlas gemini titan apollo saturn 5 and then the <laughs> shuttle transport system we'll go with that um just checking the facts to make sure all these are right. Okay, so we have the X-38. So the X-38, that's so with the uh, our X-37, or our mysterious Air Force space plane, is uh, based off of. And it's actually still being used today. Orbiter Enterprise being test flown right there in that picture. X-24, number of flights. Our number in fleet, three. Number of uh, flights, 20, 23, it looks like it says. X-28 Dinosaur, cancelled, sadly, but uh, that does look pretty slick, sounds pretty slick, and we have our X-15 at the top. So, let's go ahead, open this bad boy up. So we have a little tape to fight through, won't be too difficult. I am indeed wearing a nice and warm robe right now, don't worry, I've clothes on under it. I'm not doing like a naked video. Oh, okay, I actually enjoy this display. I would think about taping that and just setting it up like this on my shelf. That looks pretty neat on its own, no lie. Um, so we'll go ahead and pull these figures out, take a look at each of them. That is a pretty slick display right there. That's pretty slick. I do like that initiative they took. So first up, uh, it volunteered itself. We have Space Shuttle Enterprise. So as you guys know, this one would not have the heat tiles on the bottom. And uh, it was just uh, used in drop test. And this one actually could uh, take off on its own. It did have the jet engines and was capable of its own flight. So pretty neat. It's uh, just a freestanding orbiter. This one, I'm guessing, is going to be displayed like this, just <laughs> on its wheelbase. We'll move on to our X-20 Dinosaur. Pretty simplistic mold. Like, unless you're very familiar with this spacecraft based off of a modified Titan booster, which is pretty awesome because we used our Titan boosters for quite a bit, all the way from the beginning of our space program up until, like, the 90s. 
And I believe our Delta II is still based off of that technology, so very neat stuff. And we'll go over here. We'll mess with our Mercury Redstone. Now, uh, one thing I've noticed from some of these molds from brought ones I've owned in the past, they are very flexible, especially the launch escape towers at the top. Uh, and um, I don't know. But overall, for what you're paying for it, what's included, it's pretty nice. I just wouldn't recommend putting it in your pocket and expecting it to stay in the same shape, which I've done. Let's go ahead and go just chronological. Let's go to the uh, Mercury Atlas. Here we have, we'll compare the two capsules. So <laughs> there... <laughs> There is a size discrimination between the two uh, Mercury capsules, which is interesting. You would think maybe they would keep the similarity, but no. <laughs> okay, well, there, there you have it. It's our Air Force-designed Atlas rocket. And we'll go with the Gemini Atlas. We got the four-booster cluster. And at the top, we have our Gemini capsule. Pretty neat. We have United States markings on the side. There are no Air, Air Force or NASA markings, which, depending on which Gemini you have, or uh, which Atlas you have, I should say, because consider it is an ICBM uh, booster. Pretty neat. You can see that one has a little curvature to itself, which kind of proves the Earth isn't flat. It's a lot of sarcasm right there. We have our X-15. Pretty neat. This one actually does have some markings on it, which are awesome. U.S. Air Force. We have the abbreviation and the NASA on the back. Not bad. It, again, has the little plastic wheels, so if you do, <laughs> for some reason, um, want to roll these around, hey, go for it. Jump over here to our X-38. There we go. So it could have been a lifting body that could have possibly replaced the shuttle. But it didn't get that far. It was cancelled, but then they took that de that uh, designated platform and went ahead and repurposed it for what we don't know. We, haven't, we don't know much about the uh, X-37. What they use it for. Or whatever they call that little guy, X-37B. Anyway, pretty neat. Have the little NASA logo. It's the inside of the meatball logo. Have a United States flag flying into the wind. On well, this side, at least. This side, I uh, have it backwards. Okay, and here, let's see which one this is. This is the X24A. So NASA really had a love affair with these uh, lifting bodies, these um, almost shuttle-like aircraft, but ended up going with a different design ultimately. A lot of that's just due to funding constraints, budgetary concerns, which is understandable. But we've had a lot of uh, interesting designs and uh, concepts that we've had in the past, and we've had even to production stage, but were ultimately canceled. Here we have the Saturn V. Very neat. Um, this one also suffers from the bending launch escape tower, but you know what are you going to do? Uh, a <laughs> little tiny Apollo capsule at the top. Painted on their USA, we have the flags. The uh, the fins are not they're not labeled, but you could paint those on there, stencil those on your, there if you wanted to. But overall, that's a pretty nice mold for how much you pay for it. It's included in the package. Like, uh, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that because it's just going to sit on the shelf and uh, collect dust, but it looks pretty neat. Uh, if you just want to get uh, a younger person interested in the space program or just have these to mess around with, A, hey, works very well. If you need these for accuracy, you probably want to invest a little more money into it. And then here we have, what is this, Atlantis? Yeah. So we have uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis. In its uh, shuttle stack configuration, so we have the external tank, the two, the one SRB, <laughs> the 
That's awkward. The two SRBs and then our external tank. And uh, if you guys just saw it, these do detach. So depending on how you want to display this, you can just have the uh, shuttle and external tank if you would like. Which mounts on here just like so, just slides into place like it's in orbit. Or you can mount it all together. Or you can do what uh, Kennedy Space Center does and you can just mount the uh, external tank and the solid rocket boosters if you're into that kind of thing, which Kennedy Space Center is apparently. And then they have Atlantis indoors mounted sideways. So if you wanted to uh, maybe make a scale version of Kennedy Space Center, their visitor complex, you could. Anyway, it's a very neat set. Uh, they said it was 10 pieces overall. Um, I definitely recommend it for the price point it comes at. You can probably find it online uh, under uh, Legends of Space, Evolutions of Space, uh, evolution of space travel. Um, I have seen it on there. I'm not sure what the price point would be, but in person at $26 for the whole set of something that's uh, pretty neat and a gift that I know a lot of people uh, would enjoy. I definitely would have at a younger age. Um, I mean, I still enjoy it now, but I really would have enjoyed it at a younger age. Pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Just go back through, take a look at the rockets. Uh, side by side, just so you guys can see the size comparison. I'm guessing they all try to keep them the same scale for uh, just purposes of uniformity packaging because if you had a tiny Mercury Redstone, you know, about this big, and then you have the Saturn V, it's going to dwarf everything else in the set. So I guess they had to do that intentionally on its own. But thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything, anything I can cover more in depth, any answers, uh, any questions that I can possibly answer, go ahead and ask um, in the comments or however else you guys can get a hold of me. And, uh, yeah, so um, thanks for watching, guys, and thank you for your support and uh, just hanging out, watching this video.